But surprisingly, it wasn't the pitch or the acoustics at the top of the customer's list of improvements for the old stadium. It was the provision of something more basic. When the half-time whistle blows, 90,000 fans have just 15 minutes to respond to the call of nature. So Wembley needs an awful lot of this. Water. Wembley gets through hundreds of thousands of litres of the stuff every single match, much of it in a frenzy at half-time. The fans need an awful lot of these. 2,618 to be precise, more than any other stadium in the world. But having that many toilets flushing simultaneously creates a massive demand. So how do you store enough water for a mega flush without being, you know, caught short? The answer lies down in the stadium's basement. To keep up with demand, water had to be pumped around the building at massive speed. Faster, in fact, than it could be pumped into the building from the flow of mains. So there was no way supply could keep up with demand. So the designers built three gigantic tanks. They can store 740,000 litres of water. That's enough for me to have a bath every night for 25 years. But the problem was keeping them full. I'm going to see the solution for myself. And it connects Wembley back to a principle first discovered over 2,000 years ago. Inside this enormous tank, there is, well, an enormous ball cock. It's just like the ones you might have at home in your system, only a lot bigger. There are sophisticated monitoring systems in there, but even today, the most reliable means of making sure that when the water level drops, the system is automatically switched on, is with a ball cock. And it works, well, in exactly the same way as the one in the system at home works. There is a water flow valve here. And controlling that, off it comes this ball. As the water level is down, it opens the valve and lets water flow in. As the water level then rises, so does the ball on the end, until eventually it shuts off the valve and stops the water flow. This bit on the end, the float, is critical. And it floats because the weight of water it displaces is more than it weighs itself. So it works according to a principle first discovered in the 3rd century BC by a bloke called Archimedes, who'd been faced with a bit of a knotty problem. A king at the time wanted to know if his new crown was made of solid gold. Archimedes realised that the crown's volume held the answer. The crown should have the same volume as its own weight in solid gold. And the best way of finding that out? Dropping the crown in water. The crown turned out to be a fake because it had a greater volume than the gold. And I can show you how that works. These are gym weights, and together they add up to almost exactly the same weight as my body. That is a bath full of water. The story we all know about Archimedes involves him getting into his bath. As he got in, the water level rose. The water he was displacing was equal to his own volume. This was his eureka moment, and it works for anything, whether it's a person, a crown, some gold, or gym weights. 69 kilos of gym weights have displaced enough water to raise the level by about, well, three centimeters in that bath. If I were made of exactly the same stuff as the gym weights, I would displace the same amount of water and raise it by the same level. There's only one way to find out. I've always wanted to do this, so I shall. Boots off. Ah. Okay, all in the name of science, a quick bath. Yeah, displacing water, displacing more. Oh, oh, displacing quite a lot more. I've got to get 
I've got to put my whole volume under the water to see how much I do displace. If it's more than the, oh, it's already more than the gym weights. Just find out how much more. It's all to do with my volume, not my weight. Okay, so I raised it by more, so my volume is different, so I'm not made of gym weights. Obviously, in Archimedes' case, well, the legend has it, he then leapt out of the bath at this point and ran naked down the street shouting, Eureka! I'm not doing that bit. But all of this has been leading us towards his great idea, his principles of buoyancy. And those principles have given me an idea. If you increase the volume of something without adding too much weight, you can make it float like a bullcock. Theoretically, if I can increase my volume and not my weight, I should be able to turn myself into a human bullcock and walk on water. These could be the answer. My football boots, they're made from polystyrene, which is, of course, very light. But they are, as you can see, really quite big. So, technically, I should float, according to Archimedes. Can I have my life jacket, please? Just not, not that I don't have every faith in Archimedes. I'm going to slip them on. Bearing in mind, what's happening here, then, is my, my weight, my mass, not increasing very much, but my volume increasing by quite a lot on account of the size of my boots. Thank you, Martin. And straight away, if my foot were just on its own in the water, it would be way too dense. I'm floating, I think. Could I have one of my special poles for walking on water? Thank you. Yeah. What I'll need to do now is adopt a suitably striking manly pose. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Can we... What? Okay. Right. I'm not just walking on water, I am running. The man out boating. This is very pleasant. I'm still floating, amazingly. And that's all down to Archimedes, whose principles also keep over two and a half thousand